So let's go ahead and get started in today's lecture. We're going to talk about angles and directions. In the previous lectures, we talked about uh, the uh, leveling. And the leveling is very important because of leveling will be able to know the difference in elevation between two different points. Today, we're going to talk about angles and directions. Today's lecture, we are going to have a small introduction. Then we are going to talk about horizontal angle. Then we are going to talk about the units of angular measurement. Then we are going to talk about the types of horizontal angles. And then we are going to talk about the latitude or longitude. And also we are going to talk about directions of a line. And also we are going to make comparison between the azimuth method and the Beering's method. And finally, we are going to talk about the relationships between the bearings and the azimuths. First, uh, in order to locate an object, if you want to define a location of an object with respect to a reference, first you need the horizontal length. And we learn how to measure this. And also, you need to know the elevation, the vertical distance. This could be done using the differential leveling, and this it could be done using the tape. And finally, you need to know the angular direction, this angle here between these two convergent lines. So in order to define or to locate a position here with a respect with another reference, I need to know the horizontal length, the elevation, and the angular direction, this angle here. So first, what does it mean by an angle? An angle is defined as a difference in direction between two convergent lines. This is the first line, and here is the second line. These two lines converge, converge here. So the direction, the difference in direction between these two convergent lines, we call this an angle. This is an angle. Okay, you start measuring from this line towards that line or the other way around. So angles measured in surveying are classified as either horizontal or vertical. This angle, it could be horizontal or it could be vertical. Depends on the plane in which they are observed. The plane could be horizontal plane or vertical plane. If you are using horizontal plane, then you are going to say that you have horizontal angles. If the plane is vertical, then you are measuring uh, vertical angles. And in order to measure these angles in surveying, we are going to use the theodolite and also the total station because we mentioned earlier the total station can do the job of the tape and also the job of the theodolite. So the measurement of the angles, it could be done using the theodolite or the total station. First, we say that we, we could have either horizontal angle or vertical angle. Mainly, we are going to, in this lecture, we are going to talk about the horizontal angle. So, the horizontal angle is formed by direction to, you, to, to two objects in a horizontal plane. So, here we have horizontal plane. Here we have object C and object A. Here we have two convergent lines here. We set up the device here, and then we are going to uh, measure the change in direction. So, alpha here represents a horizontal angle. And this plane is horizontal plane. And we uh, use the horizontal angle to obtain relative direction. We want to know the relative direction from this line to that line. So, so that we can uh, uh, start survey control points. Uh, when we are going to make any surveying work, we need to establish uh, control points and using uh, or determining the horizontal angle will be able to connect the control points. Also, we could use this in topographic detail points or it could be used in points to be set out. So this one is going to help us to uh, connect 
the uh, many things in surveying. Also, horizontal angles usually measure. We say we mentioned this. We could use the cellulite or the total station, whose precision usually range from one to two seconds of, of arch. So it's very accurate. And also, we are going to talk about uh, the units to measure these angles. We use degrees, we use minutes, and we use seconds. The smallest part is a seconds. So here is the precision between one to twenty seconds depends on the accuracy of the uh, device so here also is important to talk about the units of angular measurement here we use the sexagesimal system we use this uh, sexagesimal system and th in this system we are going to divide a circle into uh, 360 degrees so here we are gonna divide the circle into 360 degrees degrees so here we are going to have one two three four up to 30 then 60 and so on until we complete uh, the circle inside each degree we have 60 minutes so let's say that your angle you are measuring angle and you are measuring the uh, the, the angle and the the, the 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 unit here came out to be only one degree so in one degree we are going to have 60 minutes so this comma here is the minutes so in one degree we have 60 minutes and in one minute if you, you are going to measure only one minute in this one minute you are going to have 60 seconds so again in the complete circle i have uh, 360 degrees and in one degree we have 60 minutes and in one minute we have 60 seconds this is how we measure the angle also it's important to talk about the types of horizontal angles we have interior angles we have exterior angles and we have deflection angles so here we have polygons we usually deal with polygons a lot in surveying and we call this traverse we help us to in order to establish uh, control points okay so the angles inside the polygons we call this interior angles so the angles between these convergent lines for example here we call this interior angle interior angle and so on so in this uh, polygon we have like five interior angles and we can know the summation of all these angles so the summation of the interior angles inside this polygon is n minus 2 times 180 degree 2 uh, n here represent the number of the sides of the polygon in this example we have five sides so the value of n is going to be 5 if you have a polygon of three sides triangle then the value of n is going to be 3 and then the summation of the interior interior angles is going to be 180 because 3 minus 2 is 1 and then 1 times 180 is 180 degree and so on so let's say that the uh, interior angles came out to be these values here if you want to make sure that your work is correct you are going to sum all of these angles okay and the summation should be uh, 5 550 degree because like we say here the value of n is 3 yeah is 5 because we have five sides 5 minus 2 is 3 and 3 times 180 is 540 degree so if you are, you are going to sum all of these interior angles the summation should be 540 degree so we are going to sum all of these angles here and the summation should be 540 degree if it's more or less it means that you have error and you need to correct the error like you can see here we use the degree then the minutes then the seconds the first uh, part here we have the degrees then we have the minutes 
and finally we have the second we usually measure the angles like that then we have the exterior angles here we have the interior angles and here we have the exterior angles the angles outside of the uh, uh, traverse or the polygon here we have two convergent line and the angle outside of the polygon we call this exterior angles so for exist for example here we have exterior angle exterior angle and exterior angle and we measure the exterior angle in order to check the interior angle we usually measure the exterior angles to make sure that the interior angle is correct and we have relation between the exterior angles and the interior angles because this one plus that one is going to give me a whole circle which means that the exterior angles equals 360 minus interior angle because this one plus that one is going to give me complete circle and the uh, in order the, the the degrees for the complete circle is 360 degree so we have relation between the exterior angle and the interior angle and also we can uh, determine the summation of the ex uh, exterior angles remember in the interior angle the summation was n minus 2 times 180 degree but in the case of uh, the exterior angles instead of minus we're gonna have plus so here we have minus and here we have plus so n plus 2 times 180 and the summation from this uh, from this formula the summation of exterior angles is going to be more than the summation of the interior angles finally we have the deflection angles the uh, deflection angles is a horizontal angle that observe from an extension of a back line to the forward station here we have open traverse okay we have many lines connected together this is going to represent a road for example when we first uh, when 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 when, uh, when we first want to establish a road first we are going to connect points like that then these sharp corners here is going to, uh, we are going to convert this to curves later on but first we need it's important to uh, measure the deflection angles the deflection angles we are going to have forward line this one is a forward line and this one is a backward line then we are going to make extension from the forward uh, line here extension from the forward line then we are going to measure from the extension towards the forward uh, line here we have the backward line is the extension of the backward line and then we are going to start from here towards the forward line and the angle came out to be 22 degree 18 minutes and r refer to the direction uh, through which we measure the angle r refer to the uh, clockwise direction similarly here at this corner this one is going to represent backward line and this one forward line we are going to uh, make extension from the backward line and then we are going to measure towards the forward line this time the measurement it, it was it has been done uh, anti-clockwise so instead of r we are gonna put l the letter l so the letter r in deflection angles represent measuring anti-clockwise while the letter l represent measuring anti-clockwise similarly here in this corner this one represent a backward line and this one forward line we're gonna make extension and then we're gonna measure from the extension towards the uh, forward line and the angle came out to be 17 degree uh, 51 minutes r which means that we measure uh, counterclockwise it's important to know that the, de the deflection angles are always smaller than 180 this angle cannot be more than 180 and also the deflection angle must clearly identify as being turned either to left which means that counterclockwise or to the right which means the clockwise 
and we are going to use the letters L and R respectively. Uh, L for the counterclockwise and R for the clockwise. And the deflection angles are commonly measured during open traverse. We call this open traverse, not like the uh, like this one. This is a closed traverse, and this one is the open traverse. We usually use this in highways mainly. So now also it's important to talk about directions in surveying. So uh, surveying involves measuring the location of physical uh, land feature relative to each another. In the beginning of this lecture, we say that in order to know the location of this point, it's going to be uh, uh, with, the, with the respect to this point, right? We need to have a reference. But also we can uh, this process it can be relative to a defined reference on the surface of the Earth. We need to have a global reference for us, not a relative reference. In the beginning of the lecture, we say that we are gonna uh, define the location of this point relative to that point. But we need to have a global reference, not to a relative point. We have the Earth's reference system. And it's composed of the surface divisions donated by geographic lines of latitude and longitude. So the Earth, it has been divided into uh, lines. Uh, we call this uh, latitude and longitude. The line in this direction, vertical, we call this latitude. And uh, the horizontal is the latitude and the vertical is the longitude. So first, for example, this one, this line here, which is a, a zero degree latitude, we call this the prime meridian. OK, this one is the prime meridian and this one is the longitude. The longitude connect the North Pole with the South Pole. And the range for the uh, longitude between 180 east to 180 west. So it, we could it's going to be def defined based on the prime meridian. It could be in the east or it could be in the west. And here we have the uh, zero degree latitude. This one is known as the equator. This one is not in the uh, north or in the south. It, it's in the middle. OK, and the range for the latitude between 90 degree north, 90 degree north and 90 degree south. So here we have the reference for the latitude. And here we have the reference for the uh, uh, longitude. This uh, zero degree latitude, it's known as the prime meridian or the central meridian. And here we have the uh, zero degree latitude, it's known as the equator. Also, we have famous latitude. We have the Tropic of Cancer. And this one is the latitude of 20, uh, 23 uh, and a half degree north because we call this north because it's the north of the equator. Similarly, we have the Tropic of uh, uh, Capricorn, and this one is the latitude of 23.5 degree south. This one is the south because it's the south of the equator. OK, so they have the same uh, degree, but this one is the north because it's north of the equator, and this one is the south because it's the south of the equator. We can have many latitudes, but this one is famous because uh, this area uh, enjoy uh, uh, a lot of sun, yeah, a lot of heat between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of uh, uh, Capricorn. Here we have the North Pole and here we have the South Pole. So why we, we say this is the latitude uh, 23 and a half degree, because if you are going to measure from the center of the Earth, the, your reference is going to be the latitude degree zero is the equator. And then if you are going to uh, extend a line from the center toward the this latitude, the angle is going to be uh, 23 and a half degree. Similarly, if you are going to measure from uh, the uh, center here toward this latitude, the angle uh, will be 23 and a half degree. That is why we call this latitude 23 and this one also is the latitude 23, but this one is the north and this one is the south. Similarly, I can measure 
the uh, uh, the angle here for this latitude. If this angle is 66 uh, and half degree, then we are going to call this uh, we are going to call this latitude of 66. And also here the angle is at the North Pole is going to be 90. That is why we say that the maximum the range is 90 degree north and 90 degree south. Now we understand the latitude. Here is the center, the uh, equator, and we can go north and we can go south. Here the maximum is 90 degree and also here the maximum is the 90 degree. Now let's talk about the longitude. Here is the reference, uh, the zero degree long, long, longitude, the prime meridian. Also, we can make another one. This one, it could be uh, longitude 30 east. So this one is because this one is the east of the uh, prime meridian. All of the lines here, all the meridians here is going to be east. OK, and the line here is going to be west. Followed by the degree. So how we why we we, we call this uh, longitude 30 degree? Because if you start from the center and to connect to the reference and connect with this uh, longitude, the angle here came out to be 30. And because this one is the east of the uh, uh, prime meridian, so we it's uh, uh, it's uh, the uh, the the notation has been followed by the letter E. Similarly, here the angle is going to be 90, and here the angle is going to be 60. That is why we are going to call this. Longitude 60 degree east and so on. Similarly here and here and there. Except here we have W which is the west because all of these lines are located west of the prime uh, uh, meridian. And we need to know that the east is the direction of the rotation of the earth. So latitude and longitude together enable the fixing position on the earth surface. When we uh, put the, these uh, uh, latitudes and longitude together, we are going to have uh, a fixing uh, uh, position on the Earth's surface. This is our reference. So again, regarding the latitude, the, cent the, 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 the center or the starting point is the equator. And then we are going to have uh, latitude 20, 40, and so on. Of course, we are going to have like 10, and any degrees. Those is going to be uh, uh, north of the equator, and here they are going to be south of the equator. For example, here the 40 north is the 40 degree line of latitude north of the equator. And similarly here, if we are going to have 40, 40 degrees south is the 40 degree line of latitude south of the equator. So the reference here is the equator. And the equator is zero degree uh, uh, latitude. Also, regarding the uh, longitude, the zero degree long longitude is known as the prime meridian. You could have lines east or west. Here we have 15, 30, and so on. So here we have the uh, latitude, and here we have the longitude. When we combine them together, now we have uh, uh, reference system on the Earth's surface. We can locate each and every location on the Earth based on the uh, latitude and the longitude. For example, here we have the Detroit city located in the uh, Michigan state in the United States of America. So, for example, we need to locate the, uh, the uh, location of that city based on the uh, latitude and the longitude. First, we are going to define the latitude it could be north or it could be south and then we are gonna uh, define also the location uh, based on the longitude it could be east or west like we explained earlier so first regarding the detroit uh, first we are going to define the latitude here we have the latitudes lines uh, the, the the city located between 40 and 45 degree then precisely this one is going to be 42 degree north. We it followed by the letter north because these lines north of the equator. Then we need to define the uh, longitude. It's located between 80 and 90, and the uh, the la latitude here came out to be 
83 degree west. It's, uh, it's followed by the letter west because it's the west of the prime meridian. That is how we uh, locate the position of any point on Earth. So uh, knowing this, then we need to differentiate between the magnetic north and geographic north. We have a difference between this. So the Earth rotates or spins around its axis and the two ends of the axis are the geographic poles. We have the north and the south pole. They are known as the true north and the, th the true south. Okay, but also we have the magnetic north. We know that the Earth behaves like uh, a magnet, like a big mag ma magnet. If the Earth is going to behave like that, it means that it has south and it has north. But these south and north, they are not located at the same position as the geographic north. We have difference between them. So we have magnetic north and we have geographic north. The geographic north located here. Here we have the geographic north and here we have the uh, geographic south. And also we have the magnetic north and magnetic south. Those uh, are based on the uh, uh, assuming that the Earth acting like a big magnet. And you could imagine that you, you may say that they are going to be the same, but actually they are not the same. And the uh, magnetic north varies with time. So here we have the geographic uh, north here, and here we have the uh, geographic south. But the magnetic north and the magnetic south, they vary with the time. They are not coincides at the same point. So we need to differentiate between the magnetic north and geographic north. So also we need to define the word meridians. Meridians is the uh, uh, longitude. And a line on the mean surface of, of the Earth joining the north and the south pole is called meridians. Any line joining the north and the south, we call this meridians, which means that all lines of uh, longitude are meridians. And we have geographic meridians, okay, uh, which uh, all uh, converge to meet at the pole, the North Pole and the South Pole. So here we have the North Pole and the South Pole, the geographic North Pole and the geographic South Pole. And the, these, all of these are meridians. So we call this geographic meridians. So here we have the uh, all of these meridians, okay, connect the North and the south, the one in the middle, is the prime meridian or the central meridian. This one is going to pass on Greenwich, England. Also, we have the magnetic meridians. The magnetic meridians are parallel to the direction taken by freely moving magnetized needles, as in compass. So if we have a compass, the compass is going to give us the uh, magnetic north and the magnetic south and the lines which are parallel to these uh, magnetic needles and they are connected the magnetic north and the magnetic south we call this magnetic meridians so we have geographic meridians and also we have magnetic meridians we need to remember this the geographic meridians are fixed while the magnetic meridians vary with the time and location for example here we have the north pole here we have uh, the, the geographic north pole exactly here is the top view okay if we can say that and here we have the uh, geographic north pole here we have exactly the geographic north pole but like you can see here the magnetic north pole varies with the time okay in 2010, it was here. In 2007, it was here. And in 2001, it was here, and so on. So it varies with time and with location. Okay? So we need to differentiate between the magnetic north and the uh, uh, geographic north. Okay? 
the magnetic north varies because this one depends on the uh, uh, magnetic forces of the earth and for many reasons this one is going to change uh, with the location and the time and it's not our scope here to cover why the magnetic north varies with the time but we need to know that the magnetic north pole is going to vary with times and with location while the geographic north pole is fixed here similarly the same case for the uh, uh, geographic south pole and magnetic south pole also we have the grid meridians the grid meridians if you let's say that you are working in this location and then you are gonna draw a line parallel line to the uh, prime meridian or the central meridian in this case we call this grid meridians so grid meridians are lines that are parallel to a grid reference meridian is the central meridian uh, or the prime meridian so this one is a central this one is a geographic uh, meridian and this one is the grid meridian you can go here and draw a line which is parallel to the central meridian and we call this grid meridian finally we have the assume meridian you can assume a location and then all the measurement is going to be uh, with the relation to that meridian so an assumed meridian can be established by merely assigning any arbitrary direction you can assume any direction this direction that direction or that direction and you call it meridian but this one is an assumed meridian for example you're, you are going to take in a certain straight line to the north you are going to make a uh, surveying work and then uh, the nearest street you can point into the north and say that here is my meridian but this one is going to be the assumed meridian and all the direction of all other lines are then found in relation to that to that uh, assumed meridian so to sum all of this we have the geographic meridians we have magnetic meridians we have grid meridians and finally we have an assumed meridians we need to differentiate between each and every one of them so i'm going to stop here next time we're going to talk about the direction of a line how to measure a line uh, in order to measure a line for example you have this line and you need to measure this, li this line you need to have a system okay and this system i need to fix a reference so the north here it could be geographic uh, north it could be magnetic north uh, it could be grid or it, or it could be assumed meridian okay and then all the directions is going to be uh, made with relation to that meridian that you specified okay that is why we talked about the different type of the meridians we have geographic magnetic grid meridian and assumed meridian so in order to measure any line you need to have a reference for you this reference, reference it could be geographic meridian to the north or it could be a magnetic meridian or it could be an assumed meridian uh, next lecture we are gonna talk about how to measure lines using the azimuth or the bearing method and we learn we are gonna learn how to connect them uh, together i'm going to stop here if you have any